Hey there, Internet friends. Trevor Starkey here with another episode of Wrestling Wednesday. This week, I'm going to tackle, of course, Great Balls of Fire, the dumbly named pay-per-view that WWE had this last weekend. So we kick off with the pre-show, a cruiserweight match uh, between Akira Tozawa and uh, Neville. Uh, of course, Neville was going to win this one. Uh, Tozawa had a couple nice diving headbutts and some good, strong offense pretty early on, so that pretty much sealed his fate uh, in terms of he was going to lose in the end. It had a very weak ending, I thought, with Tozawa landing on the ropes and, and getting his crotch caught, and then Neville just kicking the top rope to add to his balls of fire or whatever. I don't know what they were going for, but it was a it was a weak ending, but a predictable winner. To kick off the show proper, we had the feud between Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins, and they're just... There weren't any stakes to this match, as has been the problem with this whole build. Um, so c- when commentary comes on and says stuff like, whoever wins here is going to take a big step in their career, uh, it's just, it made me legitimately think, and maybe this was because Seth Rollins was, uh, is the cover star for the game, but it made me think of generic WWE 2K kind of commentary. Whoever wins this match is going to be a big star after this. Great. Thanks, Michael Cole, or whoever. Surprising that they actually gave Wyatt the win here and then followed it up on Monday with uh, with another win, um, since we so seldom get that, but it's still just gibberish that they're spouting, and it looks like now they're setting up maybe uh, Rollins going after The Miz uh, and joining the Intercontinental stuff, so we'll see where that goes and where Wyatt goes off to after this. Maybe he'll bring big boy Braun back into the fold. Then we had Enzo and Cass uh, come out for their bout, which was pretty much what I think was expected. Enzo came out and cut a promo about Sinatra's That's Life, which I looked up, came out in like 64 or 66, and Great Balls of Fire came out in 64, something like that. Like, the two songs were both in the 60s, and I'm left wondering if WWE Creative is just like stuck back in time somewhere. There was also like a near countout in the in the match, uh, um, which I think between the promo and that near countout stretched this match out longer than it needed to be. And of course, Cass dominated because um, he's seemingly going to get the push. Um, and we'll see where Enzo goes. Uh, he was no he was a no show on uh, Monday, so we shall see. Up next, we had the 30 minute Iron Man match for the tag titles, which was my match of the night uh, certainly. Um, Immediate brogue kick knocked out Matt, and so Sheamus and Cesaro took a quick one-up lead, uh, and then it took about ten minutes before we kind of got anything else going on, uh, and Jeff got put down, so Sheamus and Cesaro were up two to nothing. So then it was time for the Hardys to start fighting back. Um, they ended up getting uh, their first pin on Cesaro after a poetry motion and a side effect and a twist of fate, but then Matt got counted out, so we were at three and one. And I made the joke that if the Hardy Boys came back at this point, then the WWE was hopping on the you blew a three and one three to one lead bandwagon. Um, but they did not go that route, as we will see. Because yeah, Matt and Jeff team up on Cesaro for another pin, bringing it to three to two. Um, and then you had Matt landing the twist of fate from the top of the turnbuckle on Sheamus, which was a great spot and looked really painful uh, to tie things up three to three. I completely missed the tag that made Cesaro the legal man when Jeff did the swanton bomb on Sheamus, um, but he pinned him and they took the 4-3 to three lead. And then uh, it was a good, strong ending in that Jeff tried to tie things up but ran out of time during the pinfall. I would have liked to have seen the Hardy Boys win here, um, but we'll see based on their promo stuff and the and the stuff on Monday, it looks like they might be heading into broken territory. They certainly were the most overt uh, in their in cutting their promos that they've been uh, calling out obsolete and broken specifically. Uh, so we will see. Women's title between Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss was next, and the double jointed fake out moment that Alexa Bliss had. Um, apparently, it's been on SmackDown before. I'd not seen it, so this was the first time I'd. Uh, seen this moment and it was just a brilliant brilliant moment great heel mo- move she is uh, a phenomenal heel um, you had the bank statement but Alexa got to the ropes uh, and ultimately 
annoyingly, perhaps, uh, Alexa takes the loss via count out, just like the Usos did just at Money in the Bank. So it's a little uh, too soon for WWE to be hitting that same button again. But this one at least ended with Sasha kind of getting a little bit of payback uh, before leaving for the night by uh, throwing Alexa off the the top of the ramp and then jumping off of the announce table and doing her like double knees to the face kind of thing. I definitely think they're setting up, especially with what we've seen recently in uh, in like the in ring stuff. I think they're setting up for maybe a fatal four way at SummerSlam between. Alexa, Nia, Bailey, and Sasha. Um, so we'll see. I think, I think the story to tell right now is Alexa versus Nia because Nia just keeps being super dominant, and uh, and Alexa keeps kind of treating her like a pet almost. So and Nia is also the one that Alexa hasn't, you know, defended against at this point. The Intercontinental Title match was next, and this is something that. I certainly keep hearing a lot more of uh, like this feud between Miz and Ambrose has been going on for far too long. I'm still certainly new to it, but I kind of agree. Um, so I don't even have like the length uh, to kind of have have bored me of it. But I feel like they're not really doing much new to it. Um, this was pretty much what was expected. The Miz Taraj and and Maurice kind of interfered and cost Ambrose the match. So. Yeah, no surprises there. Then we had the Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman ambulance match. Uh, and I made the prediction. Originally, I thought that Roman was going to um, like win somehow. But then I kind of thought, well, how's he going to get Braun in the ambulance? He's gonna, he would have to basically like take him out, take him out, take him out to do it. Um, so I made a last-minute change to my prediction and said Strowman was probably going to win. Um, Strowman no-selling the chair shots on his arms was great. Uh, Reigns got Strowman up into the sumo and drop, but it was sloppy, but it did then instill a little bit of doubt of, oh, he can get him up, so maybe he could get him into the ambulance. Um, Strowman going through the LED wall was a great moment, and uh, and then I, I actually really enjoyed the finish of Reigns spearing himself into the ambulance. Then you have all the stuff after the match with Roman beating down Strowman and uh, and throwing him into the, the ambulance and then backing the ambulance up and crashing it into a thing with a very long, prolonged still shot on him, which I imagine was Strowman getting out of the ambulance, you know, so he would not die. Uh, and then ambulance backs up and everybody freaks out and they can't get to him or whatever. And so apparently they decided, well, we're going to throw on another match instead of going straight into Lesnar and Joe. So here's an unannounced Heath Slater versus Kurt Hawkins match that we're not even going to, like, show you, audience at home. Um, so we're going to cut back to the arena for more of the, the ambulance stuff going on backstage. And then you will hear the bell ring and the, the announce over the end that, that Heath Slater apparently won. Well, at least they collected a pay-per-view paycheck. So, you know, what are they going to complain? Strowman walking away from the wreckage, battered and bruised and stuff. Uh, definitely seems like they're going with the potential of turning him face and Roman heel. But nobody's really treating Roman like a heel on, uh, on Monday. They still just kind of treated him like they always do. Instead of like, hey, you tried to kill a guy. That's not cool. Uh... So, yeah. and I feel like Braun has ostensibly been a face in the people's eyes since he tipped Reigns over in that ambulance a few months ago. So, yeah. And then lastly, you had, in my opinion, a disappointing Universal Championship match. Uh, I know a lot of people are singing its praises and stuff, but uh, I thought it was short. Lesnar really seems to only do suplexes at this point. Um, Joe hit him through a table before the match even started. That was a nice little change of pace, but that just kind of stretched out um, what the match actually was. So yeah, it was basically suplexes versus Cochina clutches, and Lesnar ultimately won. And now he's going to be gone for 
you know, half the shows between now and SummerSlam, I'm sure. I just, like, I knew they weren't going to give it to Joe, but I hate that they're just keeping it on Lesnar, because Lesnar's just shit. He's not a good champion. He's just a name draw at this point, and it's annoying to see somebody put in the work like Joe did the last month and a half to try and, like, make to to make that feud work as well as it did. Uh, and, and you know, it looks like maybe they're keeping him in the scene, but I imagine the show next week will have Reigns beat Joe for the number one contendership, and then it'll be Reigns versus Lesnar at SummerSlam, which is what nobody wants to see. <sighs> it was a fine pay-per-view overall. Definitely had some highlights. I would like to see some other people win, and I would love to see if if they're willing to give AJ the U.S. title in a dark show at Madison Square Garden, like, fucking give anybody else the Universal Championship cause, and let Lesnar go, because he's just angry. I don't like him. And not in, like, a he's a heel so I shouldn't like him kind of way. I just don't like him because he doesn't show up. He's not expected to show up. Somebody came at me with that, like, he shows up when they tell him to, and it's like, yeah, fuck that. Fuck the WWE that is fine having a part-time champion. That's not entertaining. Urgh. The belt doesn't mean anything, and it's supposed to be your most prestigious belt. <sighs> so those are my thoughts on Great Balls of Fire. Let me know what you thought about the pay-per-view in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Trevor Starkey, from trevortrove.com. You can follow me at SnarkyStarkey on Twitter. And as always, from here at the Trove, treasure your friends.